Most birds use sound in one form or another for communication. As bird watchers, we use our eyes to locate and identify birds. But we also need to use our ears. Birding by eyes alone is like watching a movie with the sound off. Beginning birders may find themselves confused and frustrated on a spring morning when they hear sound in all directions from 20 or more species and perhaps 100 or more individual birds. Trying to sort out one song from another, or which bird is making which sound, much less identifying the species by its song, is something that takes practice to master. There is no doubt that learning a little bit about bird songs and sounds will add a dimension to your birding and thereby greatly enhance your birding skills and enjoyment. Birds are incredibly vocal creatures and sound is a huge part of their lives. They make sound in a variety of ways, by singing, perhaps exemplified best by our North American songbirds, by drumming their bills on a hard surface as woodpeckers do, or through the use of specialized feathers as in courtship display flights of the Wilson snipe and American woodcock. Birds make a lot of different sounds. Each one is species specific, and individual birds of the same species may have slightly different sounding songs. A bird song is typically a complex series of notes that is used to advertise to other birds during courtship of a mate and to determine territorial boundaries with rival males. Songs are sung repeatedly, and in most cases, only during certain seasons. This is a singing male Baird Sparrow on its territory in North Dakota. A bird's call is a short phrase that is also used to communicate but calls are almost always shorter than, and less complex than, a bird's song. Calls may be used as an alarm to communicate danger to other birds or flock mates, to gather offspring together, or merely to touch base with a mate or to solicit feeding or mating. Here's the call of a herring gull in Maine. <coughs> Nearly all bird watchers are able, eventually, to identify some commonly heard birds by the sounds they make. The common birds you hear in your backyard will make a variety of sounds that you will naturally begin to associate with the presence of these species. Some birds are far easier to identify by their voice. The Impidanax flycatchers are a prime example of this. Drab, gray-green birds with confusingly similar field marks, the Impids are most easily identified by the songs they give in spring and summer. Even their songs can sound somewhat similar. Yet, these sounds provide the best clues to which species you are seeing and hearing. The willow flycatcher song is two explosive syllables, Fitzbew, with a strong accent on the first syllable. The alder flycatchers is a slurry three syllables, Dreebio. Roger Tory Peterson was gifted with not only phenomenal hearing, but with a knack for identifying birds by sound. His Peterson Field Guide was among the first bird guides to publish mnemonics of bird songs to help make the song patterns more memorable. A mnemonic is a phrase that sounds like what the bird is singing. Thus, the chestnut-sided warbler's song in mnemonic form is CCC Miss Beecher. This is not actually what the bird is singing but this phrase resembles the cadence of the phrases the warbler sings. The eastern toey sings, drink your tea. Some birds' vocalizations are so suggestive of human speech that they have earned the bird their very name. For example, the northern bobwhite, whippoorwill, and the chickadees all say their names. It is important to understand that using mnemonics is not foolproof. You should use them but not rely upon them completely because individual birds have individual variations on their typical songs. A good example is the Carolina Wren, whose song is typically represented by the mnemonic tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle. But Carolina Wrens make a huge variety of songs and sounds. Here is the repertoire of one Carolina Wren.
Bird songs are adapted to be heard in the specific habitat in which the species lives. Woodland birds, such as the hermit thrush, have rich melodic songs that ring through the woods. Grassland bird songs are buzzy, designed to be heard over distance and the muffling sounds of the always present wind, like this grasshopper sparrow. Shorebird calls, like the willets, have evolved to be loud and staccato to cover large open distances and to carry over the sounds of wind and, in some cases, surf. Many raptor calls are long screams or whistles meant to carry over long distances or from high in the sky. Among the non-vocal sounds that birders frequently encounter are the drumming of a territorial woodpecker as its bill strikes the wood of a tree in a rapid series of beats, and the low-toned thumping of a drumming male ruffed grouse as he flaps his wings rapidly against his breast. The hollow tones of a winnowing snipe in its courtship display flight are created as the wind passes over the snipe's tail feathers, which are uniquely adapted to this sound-producing purpose. <laughs> Learning bird songs and sounds takes patience and experience. Here are some tips for birding by ear. Learn your local common birds first. If you hear a strange bird, track it down trying to match the sound with the singer. Write your own mnemonics or clues to help learn and remember the bird songs you hear. Purchase or borrow from the library a set or two of bird songs. Listen to CDs or other song files to prepare yourself for those days in the field when there's lots of bird song. Many birders use iPods and other digital music players as a handy take-along bird song reference. When birding with an experienced leader, ask questions. How did you know that was a... Ask a friend or field trip leader to quiz you on the calls you are hearing. Ask them to call songs out repeatedly. Spend time afield just listening and trying to name all the birds you hear. Soon, you'll be able to tune out familiar sounds and focus on unusual or unfamiliar ones. Learning bird songs gets easier with time. The more you practice, the more bird songs you'll learn and retain. The advantage to this is that being able to bird by ear will make you a better bird watcher and will make watching birds even more enjoyable. <laughs>